teaching number set concepts with number lines. Which numbers make up the set of counting numbers? Whole numbers? Integers? This video will show how physically creating a number line and labeling the various number sets on it can make the definition of these number sets and the relations among them clear to students. Working with a number line may also help students understand the meaning of fractions and how to order negative numbers. The manipulative used for these activities is a concrete representation of a number line. Paper tape, like the kind used for adding machines, is ideal for making number lines. By creating number lines, students see the relation among different number sets. For example, they will label the counting numbers and then see that all counting numbers are also whole numbers and integers. This activity helps students learn and remember the vocabulary associated with number sets. Locating proper and improper fractions on the number line reinforces the meaning of fractions, and physically marking and labeling negative numbers on a number line helps students understand how to order negative numbers. To create a number line, we start with a strip of paper tape. A length of about three feet works well. Fold the strip in half lengthwise, then unfold it. Now draw a line in the middle of the strip. The crease should help you draw a nice straight line. You can put an arrowhead at the right end to show that the number line continues beyond the end of the paper. Make a mark in the center and label it zero. Then make a mark a distance to the right of zero. I measure a width of three or four fingers. Continue making marks using the same unit width as far as you can to the right. Finally, label the marks one, two, three, etc. We'll use this number line to show the relation between the counting numbers and whole numbers. We'll make a red triangle around each counting number, and now a blue circle around each whole number. Notice how easy it is to see that all the counting numbers are also whole numbers. Now let's put some negative numbers on our number line. Using the same unit width, make several marks to the left of zero and label them negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. Now our number line shows integers too. We draw a black square around all the integers. The counting numbers and whole numbers are integers too. The relation between the sets of counting numbers, whole numbers, and integers is now clearly illustrated. What about locating fractions on the number line? Let's start by plotting one-fifth and four-fifths. These are proper fractions, so we zoom in on the interval from zero to one on our number line. As we start plotting fractions, I like to ask my students how many cuts it takes to divide a cake into two pieces. They can visualize the cake and they know that it can be divided into two pieces with just one cut. So to divide the interval from zero to one into five equal pieces, we need to make four marks. In the language of the cake analogy, four cuts. We label these marks one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths. There's usually a student who asks, what about five-fifths? And then someone else reminds him that five-fifths is equal to one. To complete our task, we mark the points one-fifth and four-fifths. Now let's plot the mixed number three and a third. I remind my students that this means three holes plus one third more. So it's more than three, but less than four. On the number line, we zoom in on the interval from three to four. To divide that unit into three equal parts, it takes two cuts. Mark them three and a third and three and two thirds. I usually have to remind my students that four is three and three thirds. Now we're ready to plot the point three and one third. To plot an improper fraction like seven fourths, it's easier to first change it to a mixed number. Seven fourths is the same as the mixed number one and three fourths, so it's between one and two. On our number line, we zoom in on the interval from one to two. It takes three cuts to divide that interval into fourths. We plot the point at one and three fourths. Finally, to fully accomplish our task, we should rewrite the mixed numbers as improper fractions. Okay, so let's put this together and plot three negative fractions. We'll focus on the negative side of our number line, numbers to the left of zero. Let's start with negative one-half. It's between zero and negative one. 
It only takes one cut to divide that interval into two pieces. Okay, now here's negative one half. Now we'll plot negative two and a half. We know that positive two and a half is between two and three, so negative two and a half will be between negative two and negative three. So we mark the point right here. Finally, we'll plot negative five thirds. Converting it to a mixed number gives negative one and two thirds, so it's between negative one and negative two. We divide that unit into three equal pieces and plot negative five thirds at the second mark. Notice that each of the fractions is in a different unit interval. This is very important when you do this activity in class or assign it to your students. Make sure you only have one kind of fraction in each interval. Here are some suggestions you might want to consider when you use number lines with your students. For these activities, each student needs a strip of paper tape. You can cut the strips of paper tape beforehand yourself, or you can just pass around the paper tape roll and have each student cut an arm's length strip. It's best for all students to create their own number lines so they can keep them in their notebooks where they'll be handy when they need to refer to them to add new number sets. But as they create their number lines and locate points on them, you might want students working in small groups so they can troubleshoot minor questions among themselves. The full number line activity shown here, locating whole numbers, counting numbers, integers, and fractions, is best done in stages at different times in the course as you introduce each set of numbers. The first activity will be just to create a number line, place the counting and whole numbers on it, and label these two number sets. Then students can put their number lines away until they're ready to add the integers and fractions to them. Remember that when asking students to locate fractions, you should be careful to have only one denominator in each unit interval. Some students have trouble ordering negative numbers. These students may find looking at their number lines helpful since they can see, for instance, that while on the positive side, three is to the right of two, on the negative side, negative three is to the left of negative two. The paper I use for the number line activities is available at office supply stores. It's about two and a quarter inches wide, which is just right for drawing and labeling a number line. I found that a typical roll can make about 30 strips. Students can get online practice locating proper fractions at the Math is Fun website. I'll show you what this online activity looks like next. Here is the mathisfun.com website's Match the Fraction activity. We're given a proper fraction and have to locate it on the number line. First, we decide how many slices we need to divide the interval from 0 to 1 into. Then we move the mouse to the correct location and click to check it. This activity reinforces for students the meaning of a fraction's numerator and denominator. There's also a words to number line match the fraction activity. We're given the name of a fraction in words and then have to locate it on the number line. This activity may be especially helpful for English language learners. I hope you'd like to have your students try the number line activities you've seen in this video. This is Marianne. Goodbye.